Okay, everyone, so today we are going to be talking about kinematic curves. So before we get into how to do that and how to analyze all of that, first I'm going to talk about what these things even are. And so first, kinematic, we can see that has the base of kinetic, which means movement. And so kinematic basically means describing movement with um, like diagrams and words and um, yeah, basically just describing movement. And then with curves, I know it may sound quite silly, but in physics, um, we do define curves as a bent line, even though um, you may see this as more of an oxymoron. Okay, so let's get into it. So um, first I'm going to be making a positioned time graph. And so let's say this is the origin and I want to get over here on my um, position time graph. And so um, basically I, this is a linear graph so I'm going to be moving at a um, constant slope. And so um, on a position time graph since position is meters and times is second, the slope is basically going to be meters over second. And so we also know that um, meters per second is velocity. So then we know that the different points on the graph are going to represent instantaneous velocity. So now we can just um, look at the different points on the graph. And so now we'll make, we can use this graph to make a velocity time graph. And so on this graph, we can look at different points, like I said. So um, I'm looking at three main points to um, decipher the instantaneous velocity. And so since the slope on all these three points is constant, then we can... Um, translate that to our velocity time graph. Um, so now we just go over here and so since all of those points have the same slope, the slope on the velocity time graph is going to be zero since the slope is not changing on our position time graph. And so now you may ask why is the velocity time line above the x-axis? Well, that's because on the position time graph, the points are increasing, or um, the position is increasing on the graph. So that's why uh, we put the um, line above the x-axis, because even though the slope is constant, it's um, a positive constant. Okay. Um... Yeah, so we can just translate that to our velocity time graph. And so now we can do the same thing with our acceleration time graph. So we have acceleration on one side and time on the other because like in position and time, um, velocity is meters over seconds and time is seconds. So this velocity time graph is basically meters per second squared, which is acceleration. And so now we can do the same thing by looking at different points on this graph that show the instantaneous velocity. So now on this graph, um, the same thing is that the um, slope is constant, but it's not increasing. It's not a positive constant. It's just zero. And so now on the acceleration time graph, we know that the line is going to be a zero slope on the axis. Okay, so this works for um, other types of graphs that aren't linear either. Um, so let's say on this graph that I am moving at an exponential increase, and so my slope is actually changing throughout the graph. Um, oh yeah, this is position time graph. So we can um, essentially do the exact same thing, and so just putting three points on our graph to look at. Um, so on this one we can see that this point has a relatively slow slope. This one has a medium one. And then up here we have about our highest or maximum slope. Um, so if we draw a line through that, 
you can see how the slope is changing or increasing at an exponential rate. So now we can come over here to our velocity time graph and we're just doing the exact same thing that we did in the last problem and translating that into our velocity time graph. And so now what we do is, um, so we can analyze that this is a linear increase because here we have our slowest slope and that's going to be a slow velocity. And then here we have medium slope, so about medium velocity. And then here we have our highest slope, so that's going to be our highest velocity. And so that's how we can translate this first graph into the second one. So now we essentially do the same thing that we did with position and velocity in the last problem with velocity and acceleration in this problem and just translating this linear um, change and slope to an acceleration graph. So we can see that it's going to be a positive zero slope because in velocity the slope is constant um, yet um, a positive constant. So that's how we know the acceleration graph. Okay, so now you should know the basics of using, interpreting, and analyzing different kinematic curves.